Live from Mountain View, California, it's theCUBE. Covering DevNet Create 2019. Brought to you by Cisco. Hi, welcome back to theCUBE. Lisa Martin with John Furrier covering, day two covering, I should say, Cisco DevNet Create 2019 at the Computer History Museum in Mountain View, California. We're pleased to welcome Prashant Shanoi, VP of Product Marketing, Enterprise Networks and DevNet at Cisco. Prashant, it's great to have you join John and me this afternoon. Great to be here. So this event is growing year after year. We, John and I have been talking about this very strong sense of collaboration and community with the attendees that are here in person. One of the big things yesterday was yeah. talk, that Susie was talking about was this, this what's coming in Wi-Fi. Talk to us about this next-gen Wi-Fi and how it's going to be so impactful to everyone. Yeah, it's a, it's a phenomenal technology inflection point this year, I feel. We can't believe it, but you know when was the first Wi-Fi that got started? 2001. Ooh, pretty close. 1999. So this is the 20th anniversary of Wi-Fi. It's come to be life, right? So it's now in its full yeah, teens. It was by two years. Right? So yeah, I know. <laughs> but 802.11a was the first Wi-Fi technology, and the speeds were, promised speeds were 54 megabits, okay? Uh, but the real speeds were like six meg or something, right? And now, this is the sixth generation of Wi-Fi. So we've come a long way and we take it for granted in our daily lives. Absolutely, I don't do. think I can think a day without Everyone wi talks about Wi-Fi. <laughs> the kids, yeah, what's I the Wi-Fi password? <laughs> I change it all the time. Kids, it's a tip. parent, pro yes. tip. Change listen. the password. They'll call you, your kids will call you back. It's a, it's a pro tip. tip. <laughs> yeah. but, but, Distance yeah. has been an issue. Distance and, and yeah. radio frequency has certain propagation yeah. techniques, so are you yeah. close to the router? That room doesn't have it, this doesn't have it. So there's always been distance um, and throughput. Latency, throughput, Most, most capacity. people say, who's streaming Netflix? Wi-Fi's down. So again, people know this. They, they experience it every day. Exactly. What's the big hubbub about Wi-Fi 6? What's different? Uh, I got a little preview from Todd, so I'll let you explain it, but yeah. what is the notable bullet points of why it's different and yeah. why it's a game changer? So it's, as with every technology, three things that it always brings up, better experiences, better capacity, increased capacity, and better battery savings, uh, which I think is very important for users, but more importantly, useful for IoT applications, which is, I'm very, very excited on what it's going to unleash when it comes to IoT. It's been in the fringe side of IoT, like oil and gas, mining, utilities, is what we think when we think of IoT, and now we're going to think IoT in carpeted space, like this, right? Each one of these devices are IOT devices now, like your HVAC yeah. systems, your lighting systems, air conditioning systems, physical surveillance cameras, everything with the Wi-Fi is IOT. And because of this increased capacity and increased density, high density environments where this capacity becomes really critical, imagine 20 devices simultaneously using Wi-Fi to communicate high bandwidth intensive application, that's when Wi-Fi 6 becomes really critical and powerful. And that opens up a huge So more coverage slot. area with the antennas, mm -hmm. the MIMO antenna, yeah. and bandwidth, right? Capacity and bandwidth, like compared to .11a, and even .11ax, right, it's uh, up to 4x better capacity, 4x better battery savings, and the promised throughput of like six gigabits, right? So, but the key part here is simultaneously talking to multiple devices at the same time. And that is very, very crucial yeah. uh, because of technologies, I don't want to geek out here, like yeah. OFDMA yeah. and Well, let's talk architectural, because one of the things Susie brought up was architectural shifts are going to be the big, uh, game, yeah. one of the game changes she brought up. And you know, Wi-Fi, and I've seen it grown from the beginning, I remember when they first came out, it was a revelation, and you know, the battery powers was an issue, but it always was viewed as a peripheral to the network. Yeah. You, you bolt on Wi-Fi and you just basically extend your LAN yeah. um, to use network parlance. And now you're seeing people working on making it much more of core one network. And Absolutely. Meraki kind of shows the benefits of having wireless and wired yeah. work together as one. Yeah, This Absolutely. seems to be the thesis behind Wi-Fi 6. One core thing, not yeah. a bolt-on extension. No, uh, absolutely. Uh, I think uh, there's a saying which is a reality, behind every wireless there are tons of wires, <laughs> right? So, because everything gets connected to the wire infrastructure. And with Wi-Fi 6 now having increased capacity and increased density, it's causing a cascading effect into the rest of the network infrastructure. So it becomes highly, highly crucial when you architect your network infrastructure, not just to think about wireless, but what happens to the access switch, 
to the core, to the distribution, to the aggregation. And that has a compounding effect, like multi-gig speeds in the access to 10 gig to 40 gig in the core, going all the way to 100 gig, right? So the whole performance and reliability to have that immersive experience that Wi-Fi 6 needs to bring in, needs so to be So for there. developers and entrepreneurs out there who always look for the white space, Cisco's a big, multi-billion dollar company, you guys got big market share. Whenever there's big moves like this, it causes a new change in the order, the pecking order of, yeah. of companies. It changes the landscape. This is going to be a game changer because it's going to create new opportunities to create new things. Yeah, absolutely. What are some of the things that you see out there that you could share for people watching who are you know, hacking around, creating things, who say, yeah. I want to create something big. What's the enablement? What are some of the, the things that you see happening that are going to be emerging out of this? Yeah, a lot of fringe technologies that are fringe right now are going to be mainstream. Like, imagine 2006 when iPhone came in, right? So, and we were just having the discussion, like, that came in at the heels of major shift in connectivity. That's when 3G came in, right? And that provided multi-megabit capacity and you saw new applications come in. Now Uber, Lyft, all these kind of applications were possible because of the connectivity. And now Wi-Fi 6 along with 5G will unleash the next wave of applications. So first thing is immersive applications, things that are VR, AR. It's used for gaming right now and kids use this. You're going to see that come in hospitals where surgeons can do remote surgeries, they can have high density imagery of your brain, for example, as you're operating, being sent to a remote expert, and on the fly make decisions, right? Like, that is going to be pretty normal and standard. In fact, quite a few of our customers are testing this out, right? VR learning for students, right? If I were to go, like imagine you are at uh, the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, August 1963, right? Listening to MLK, I Have a Dream speech and you're in the crowd, immersed in the yeah. VR. Like, which student wouldn't have more recollection and really connect with that, right? Absolutely. So, and you're going to see more and more of these, so it's a better way of learning and really getting that learning sticking in your brain. You're going to see more of that happening. And the same goes with retail experience. Your shopping is going to completely change the way because of all these immersive experiences. And then, because of the higher density, you're going to see entertainment venues like stadiums, where everybody now wants to share their experience to the outside world and live stream it, right? And I was talking to a Carnival Cruise Line, who's one of our customers, and they call themselves City on the Sea, which means that a cruise ship is nothing but it has entertainment, casinos, hotels. Uh, lots of food. Lots of food, <laughs> swimming pools, concerts happening. And when people took vacation, they just wanted to disconnect from everything in the world, right? Now it's completely the reverse. They want to connect full on and share their experience yeah. in the land, right? So, and they want to stream it live, 4K. Yeah. And these cruise ships are transforming themselves to provide this always on, fully on, immersive digital experience. And they've created things like a mobile app to order pizza, no matter where you are on the ship. I think within five minutes, they're going to find the exact location of where you are on the ship and deliver pizza to you. Right? And These you know, kind of experiences you know, the will happen. The perfect storm in all this too is that the cloud earnings are coming out. We saw Microsoft's earnings yesterday, Amazon yeah. Web Services earnings with part of Amazon today. The cloud stocks are up, the clouds are growing at massive scale. They're a power source for these application developers. Yeah. As well as the on-premise business. So you, have, you now have the perfect developer environment. 100%. To, to create these new wacky ideas that will be it's, standard. I mean, what was once, what we take as standard, as you mentioned, was a wacky idea in 2006. Yeah. Location services, checking into a hotel with my phone and having cars yeah. being delivered to me, what? Yeah, Who does that? Yeah, and this, this becomes a reality, and, and cloud really increased the pace of innovation, right? Now it's kind of cheaper, you don't need to get your own server, you can kind of swipe your credit card, get a bunch of VMs, start building applications, and now you have the required bandwidth capacity and density in your infrastructure, and you have the right devices right now to bring that experiences to you, right? So now it's this trifecta of things, awesome devices, the network ready to deliver those experiences, and cloud being able to scale out to build those experiences. Well, Sean, I know you got a big announcement coming up on the 29th, it's a virtual event, I think cisco.com, they can probably find out the, uh, the URL where the event is. Without revealing all the secret <laughs> sauce, I know you guys had Wi-Fi 6 inside Cisco, testing yeah. it, I've heard people in the hallway here yeah. talking about it. Um, they're pretty animated in their commentary. Can you share the vibe and What's it like when the engineers look at the data when they say, we just deployed the Wi-Fi 6, what, were they, what was the reactions? Um, yeah. Were they blown away, were they, was it mediocre, was it, 
Uh, yeah. What were some of the things that they were saying? What was the feedback? We are piloting that, and the best way to look at it is if you go to the wireless dev center on DevNet, you're going to see that we compared a 4K video running with Wi-Fi 6 and without Wi-Fi 6. I think the results speak for themselves. Like the kind of experience that you're going to see is going to be beautiful. And when employees look at those things, and I talked about a few experiences last week, we had a thing called Cisco Beat, which is internal employees that we rally around and talk about technology, but more importantly, what it means to us as human beings in yeah. a personal way and what it means to our customers. And they were blown away with some of the applications that are going to be mainstream in all of the industries that I talked about, right? Like healthcare, hospitality, education, entertainment, venues, et cetera. What's so. the low hanging fruit use cases? What's the, the things that are going to be right obvious, right out of the gate for companies to implement in terms of deploying Wi-Fi 6 and seeing immediate benefit? Immediate benefits is high density environment, period. Right, like student lecture halls, convention centers, areas like this, where everybody wants to like understand what's going on, but be digitally and visually connected, right? It's not only about email checking anymore, that happens automatically. Yeah. But if you're here, you want to watch Susie's keynote live stream right now with high density and 20 other people want to watch with you on their devices, it's possible without a hitch. So that seamless always on experience becomes a reality that people can easily test out in small environments, right? Not in their entire environment where there are high density of people accessing multimedia applications or high bandwidth applications. So I feel that's a low hanging fruit. And then it's going to go more and more towards IoT applications where sensors are getting connected. Like some of our customers or brewers have hundreds and thousands of sensors in their farms, in uh, brewing machines, and they want all of the data to come and look at that simultaneously for quality control, right? Beer, no matter where it's made, should taste consistent, right? So you can see that coming to life because now all of these can be connected and because of better density, better capacity, and better battery savings for these IoT devices that Wi-Fi 6 provides, you make these applications possible. So you're going to see very vertical specific applications coming more and more uh, with Wi-Fi 6. Vertical specific, because you've mentioned a number of different customer examples, you know, ranging from retailer to yeah. Carnival Cruise Line, it's now this connected city. Yeah. When Are there any verticals you see where when you're talking with customers, they're not quite mm. there yet? Yeah, that's an interesting thing. It's, it's for a change, you always have these early adopters, but there's a lot of laggers who are just watching, waiting on the sideline and say, hmm, that's not for me. With Wi-Fi 6, there's been a lot of industry excitement, uh, I would say, like manufacturing full on, right, it's coming on board. Retail, yeah. the retail, higher education are always in the early adopter phase because for them, and there's been studies shown to say this directly impacts their brand. brand. Like customer yeah. experience yes. defines brand. Oh, and Wi-Fi equals customer experience these days, right? Yeah. So you're going to see all of these industries really yeah. I think I haven't seen much in maybe financial services, if you will. <laughs> I think that's, that's the only thing that I can remember. Transportation, yeah. big on. Like machine to machine communication, autonomous driving is possible now because of 5G and Wi-Fi 6, right? So, and you're seeing more and more of this industry. This is right in your wheelhouse. And you guys have been pushing the edge for a long time. SD-WAN, campus networking. Yeah. This is not new to Cisco. Yeah. But now with Wi-Fi 6, it literally lights that up, pun yeah. intended. I yeah. mean, you can now enable those environments to be completely robust, fully addressable, data-driven. Yeah, I think data that you mentioned becomes very, very crucial uh, in this because especially now when you have so many more users, so many more devices, so many more applications getting on the network, people are really try, try, trying to figure out what do I do with this? How do I get visibility into, am I delivering the right experience? Am I providing the right security, et cetera, right? So data becomes extremely crucial, and you'll see emergence of ML and AI technology because it's going to be humanly impossible to look at all of the data and make sense. So you got to do machines, do their job, figure out patterns around dwell time, foot traffic, predictive ways of saying things may break, the experience may change, and predicting that even before they happen and giving the right insight to the IT and line of business. 
So Wi-Fi 6 is going to open up a whole new slew of ML and AI driven operations and management capability too. So that's When are they going to bolt the GPU on the Wi-Fi 6 devices? <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's happening. Ready? It is going to happen because you can run edge computing applications right, uh, right on Wi-Fi 6 devices, so you're going to see all of that. So application hosting capabilities with GPU powered applications Just a network are going to be there. Right? Yeah. So it's it's that you are going to see that, and frankly, even I don't know what those some of the edge computing applications with Wi-Fi six will be, but we are seeing more and more of these coming. Uh, well, we did some research on Wikibon as part of the Silicon Angles team where we proved that it's easier and more cost effective rather than moving data around. Mm -hmm. You move compute to the edge, edge. and then you, you you use the the backhaul because it costs money to send data around the network. It's, yeah, it's absolutely. Costly. Yeah, and, and the autonomous cars was one great example, right? Like, it's a life and death situation when you're letting the car drive itself, right? So you can't send all the data to the cloud and say, analyze it for me. There are instantaneous decisions to be made in milli, micro, nanoseconds that needs to be done on the edge. So I think autonomous cars are a great example of edge computing that needs to happen right at the edge. The learning can then start happening in the cloud, right? As and when, these things get more and more smarter, you send all this data, you correlate all of the intelligence there, you yeah. send it back to the machines. So you're going to see these kind of edge computing applications. So you're excited by Wi-Fi 6? Nah. nah. Oh, Wi-Fi 6, <laughs> it's, it's an even number. Isn't it supposed to be odd numbers or lucky? I mean, the naming convention? No, we is want to be better than 5G. It's like 5G is fifth generation of cellular, Wi-Fi okay. 6 is sixth generation of Wi-Fi, right? So you have to trump I mean, the 5G with the 6. Yeah. Kind of get no, ahead of it. Because it is truly the sixth generation it's of okay, Wi-Fi. that's what it is. If we were to go back in time, we would call 802.11ac Wi-Fi 5. Right, it's kind of not that easy to say, but yeah. So Wi-Fi 5 happened like three to four years back and now it's Wi-Fi 6 chance. So. We'll have to do a deep dive in the studio sometime on getting oh, into absolutely. all the spectrum issues, you know, the channels yeah. and the antennas and chains and all that good stuff. Yeah, there's a lot to geek out on that. Yeah, it's going to be fun. <laughs> yeah. So you talked about kind of, before we wrap up here, you talked about you know everything really kind of being related to or how this can help companies with brand. And brand is everything to any type of company. Yeah. We talk at every event we go to about, it's all about customer experience. Yeah. So Mike, what last question for you is, how is Wi-Fi 6 and some of these new technologies that clearly you're excited about, how do you think that's going to change the experience for your internal customers and for being able to get things out faster to your external Cisco customers? Yeah, when you say internal, our own employees, yes. our R&D. Yes, exactly. Absolutely, so I think, and one of the examples was shown right here, right? So, and, and I'm connecting the two answers that you had, like there's a lot of technology details behind what we do, right? We spend tons of, money doing R&D, but we wanted to expose that to our own customers, to our channel partners, and to our developers, right? So this is something that Wi-Fi 6 brings a lot to, to our customers. So all the goodness, the intelligence that we have hidden in our network now gets exposed through these APIs to our developers and to our own customers. So the internal customers of ours, which are engineers, Cisco IT, are tremendously excited to see what that unveils to us, right? And DevNet provides that platform where you can expose this through APIs, whether it's for security, whether it's for application experience, whether it's for better operations, and have new co-creation of applications that we haven't envisioned, uh, new ways of ecosystem partners coming up and building new applications that we haven't uh, envisioned. So for our own R&D teams, it's pretty exciting. Big because, catalyst. Yeah, just, exactly. You're just providing the platform, yeah. it's the catalyst yeah. for innovations, yeah. and that's what the internet was when we created that, right? We didn't know that internet of 20 years back is going to be the internet of today, and we didn't envision that. Well, the API is going to open up your market because you're going to create an enablement to pass that forward, the opportunities to other developers to come up with the ideas. Yeah, absolutely, and that's the, that's the whole idea, is to provide them a platform to come up with innovations and ideas and help share these ideas to other folks, right? Because when the minds melt, it gets better and better. Build some good apps, make, get it distributed on Wi-Fi 6, make some money, build a business, create a great app. Yeah, it for Wi-Fi 7. Like, it's a big inflection <laughs> point. It's a pretty good model. It's an yeah, inflection point. <laughs> it is, it, it is truly, I believe, an inflection point. Mainly because, frankly, Wi-Fi 6 and 5G coming together, it's truly, because, me and you as a user really don't care whether I'm on Wi-Fi or cellular, and we shouldn't, right? 
All I expect is no matter what I do, where I go, and I use my device, I should get the same consistent seamless it experience. Works. Well, I don't have the unlimited plan, so I'd love to have it go to the Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you've got this virtual event next week on the yeah. 29th. Is that going to tee up anything, any exciting things we're going to hear at Cisco Live a oh, few yeah. weeks later? Big time, big time. Any, uh, any teasers you can give us? <laughs> Without getting fired? Yeah, it's going to be tough. No, yeah, I think things that we talked today are what we're going to explain more and we're going to give a more flavor on what Cisco is actually doing from our products perspective, solutions, partnership perspective to bring it to life, right? So that's very exciting. So I highly encourage the folks that are watching this to register for this on uh, Cisco.com, go wired for wireless event. So it's fun because we got a lot of industry experts, customers, because that's where rubber meets the road. Absolutely. And that's where they talk good applications, how far along they are, yep. what are they testing, what are they trying out, and then we can geek out on yep. all the technology, right? But it always starts with why and why does it matter? So, and that's why I'm excited. Yeah. It sounds exciting. My cheeks are hurting from smiling. Prashvan, thank you <laughs> oh, yeah. so much for, right, for sharing <laughs> your enthusiasm, your energy yeah. and expertise. It's been fun. We look forward to uh, the virtual event next week and hearing more about, about what's going on at Cisco Live. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, John. Well, Thanks. our pleasure. For John Furrier, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from day two of our coverage of Cisco DevNet Create 2019. Thanks for watching.